welcome to Localities Making Bank podcast, where we continue our exploration of South Florida's entrepreneurial landscape with host Keith Costello, co-founder and CEO of Locality Bank. Sit back, relax, and let South Florida visionaries guide you on an entrepreneurial journey from tribulation to triumph, sharing the very stories that have shaped them. All right, Carson Cutachief, welcome to Locality Bank's Making Bank podcast. Thank you for having me. Excited. Absolutely. Well, really glad to have you here because uh, we're we're clients of each other. Right. So, uh, you know, you've done business with our bank and I've been in to see you for my aches and pains. And, you know, I can give give a great testimonial right now that uh, you've, you've helped me immensely. So uh, especially when you get my age and you're still trying to stay fit and you, you need somebody like Carson. <laughs> but anyway, I uh, want to really just kind of start in the beginning and talk about, you know, where you grew up and kind of your family and yeah. any early businesses or jobs or entrepreneurial activities yeah well it's nice to be working with you uh outside the clinic which means you're hopefully feeling good so yes <laughs> um yeah so originally from akron ohio midwest guy uh you know both my parents were teachers so uh not necessarily an entrepreneur background but got to see more of uh working with people constantly uh helping kids out they were both in inner city schools so had the opportunity sometimes when i was you know sick to go spend a day with them and and see uh a different side of the town, um, different challenges per se. And uh, I think that was some of the best days I can remember as well to see, uh, get outside of my comfort zone circle of friends and see um, how other kids are, are living and things like that and be able to meet kids from different neighborhoods, uh, et cetera. So um, small town in uh, Akron, Ohio, but uh, you know, I, I think a lot of the values that were instilled at an early age, as far as work ethic, honesty, um, altruism, things like that, uh, really kind of stayed ingrained in me, I think, even moving down here. Uh, when I moved down here about 15 years ago, I was one of your spring breakers on the beach and uh, <laughs> came down here in February. So obviously fell in love with uh, the sunshine and, and the, the lifestyle that SoFlo offered. I think I always associated South Florida with vacation as opposed to actually living a productive lifestyle and uh, down here. So um, kind of Backtracking back to Ohio, uh, played sports in high school. I have a brother who's four years older, so it was always great to bang around with the older guys. We were talking earlier about you doing CrossFit with the younger guys, and it's just, it, it kind of raises your level of competition and uh, sharpens your skills. So whether it's mentally, physically, maybe all the above. So literally had a perfect childhood. I, I have nothing but great things to say. Wow. So that's great. Yeah. And then, yeah, go ahead. And so, and so you, uh, so you came down here, you were going to school at, in, uh, at Bowling Green. Bowling Green, yeah, yeah. in Ohio. And so was that when you came down here for spring break when you were in college? Yeah, so I was in a fraternity and uh, I, was, I remember getting out of the good old Spirit Airlines, you know, you're a college <laughs> kid, those $100 tickets are, right. seem amazing. Um, but yeah, five fraternity brothers were in a yellow cab going over the 17th Street Bridge in February, it's 81 and, you know, the beach hit me and something something hit me as far as the the energy the everything was just i was i was hooked addicted wanted to figure out how i could take my lifestyle from ohio and trans transition down here yeah so. awesome when you say 81 you're not talking about 1981 because i'm saying that's when yeah, i was yeah. down <laughs> that's when i was doing spring break. yeah 81 degrees <laughs> all right yeah, thank yeah. you and it was more around 2000 what five six so this is yeah 2005 yeah cool and so like a lot of people who ended up down here, right? Mm -hmm. That was how I think a lot of people ended up moving here was like, they came down for spring break, came down, visited the beaches and were like, wow, you know, this is, this is where I want to, yeah. where I want to stay. So uh, when you were in college, how did you decide, you know, what were you majoring in and what were you thinking about that you wanted to do at that time? Yeah, I think and maybe other freshmen, sophomores kind of relate. I didn't really have an idea. So I was, I think I'd watched too many movies. I wanted to be an FBI agent at the time and uh, was taking business courses. So, uh, you know, not heavily uh, interested in it, but just trying to pick a path. And I, I was a sophomore, was playing basketball, injured my knee, uh, nothing serious, but went, they sent me to physical therapy. And, and I think I was intrigued in the sense of my prior experiences with healthcare professionals, particularly doctors was 
You know, you kind of go in there, they look at you for five minutes, write you a script for a pill and kind of send you on your way. Um, but for PT, that uh, really intrigued me. Uh, the guy I went to see, you know, he's educating me about my injury, uh, talking about a game plan, what we need to do, getting his hands on me, on my knee to, you know, start working on me. So I left there feeling better. No pills, no prescription drugs, anything like that. Uh, and he, he taught me some things to do as well. So laid out a game plan. Um, and I think that's where, like I said, really sparked my interest. So I did a few hours a week shadowing him and yeah. And, just, and this was while you were in college? Yeah, this was back in Bowling Green. Okay. So at that time, it really uh, sat down with my um, uh, advisor and made the switch over to uh, called pre-physical health, uh, pre-physical therapy. So. Wow. And then you graduate. Yeah. And uh, is that when you decided to move down so here? I took two years off. Okay. And the purpose of that was uh, really gain some experience within the field. So I worked at a hospital up in East Cleveland. It's called long-term acute care. So, you know, what I had envisioned as far as what I wanted to type of uh, patient or client I wanted to work with was an athlete. This was the complete opposite. These are people with chronic serious illness on ventilators. Um, you know, half the time they're not even conscious when you're going to see them. Uh, so it was, it was definitely, uh, an eye-opening experience, but it taught me a lot about, you know, uh, empathy for these, these folks who are really suffering and also working as, as a team too, cause you're, you're working with as a rehab tech, you know, I was just, I would go in and kind of like stretch their limbs out, things like that to prevent, uh, contractures in the tissue and, and things like that. So. Uh, but working with doctors, working with respiratory therapists, working with nurses, working with, you know, nutritionists, a uh, multitude of different areas of, in the healthcare field coming together to care for one patient, you know, uh, sitting in on stroke team meetings. So if a patient had a stroke, a bunch of healthcare practitioners meet and talk about the game plan for the week for the patient. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. So it was a great experience. I never want to be in that setting again. It's just not for me, but, um, it was, it was pretty intense. So the quick story, the first day I, I stepped in as a rehab tech and my, uh, so you would go in and, you know, these patients are a lot of times unconscious. So, uh, I went into the room and, you know, you always, you're taught to introduce yourself despite them, the patient may be being unconscious. So I start, you know, kind of working the limbs and I'm noticing like, you know, Mrs. Jones doesn't have any lines hooked up to her. This is kind of odd. So I'm still working on her and my, my boss comes up. She's like, Carson, come over. So I walk out. She's like, yeah, Mrs. Jones passed away four hours ago. I was like, <laughs> all right, day one, let's go. Hey, so, man, trying yeah. to bring them back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's cool. So that's really interesting. I, I guess, you know, seeing people at that stage, right, when they're, as, you, as you're saying, you know, they're on ventilators, they're, you know, really, you know, in a, in a very bad a state in terms mm -hmm. of their health and you know so seeing that that probably gives you uh, the motivation i guess to be at the other end of the spectrum trying to teach people you know how to stay fit how to stay yeah. healthy keeping people like me you know from falling apart you know as we continue to try to, yeah. to work out and things oh absolutely i mean and also moving down here from ohio i you know ohio great place uh, it's just Certain aspects of healthcare or, or, or health, I should say, preventative health, they're just very far behind on um, in the sense of nutrition uh, activity. Yes. I mean, a lot of it is predicated on the weather up there. But I mean, even moving down here, just the food is so much cleaner. We have sea, you know, more access to good seafood, fresh seafood. There's more of a you see more options for, you know, either a Mediterranean diet or um, even the Hispanic culture that things are just more natural. There's not a lot of additives, things like that. So, uh, yeah, and just, you know, a lot of those people I saw that were in the hospital were doing three things heavy in their life, which was either smoking cigarettes, uh, poor dietary choices, or they were just very sedentary. So you throw, you know, even one of those three chances of being in that setting are, are pretty high. Wow. So, so there's some, Healthy, you know, this is an entrepreneurship podcast, but we're getting some, yeah. some good health advice <laughs> uh, as well. So that's good. Yeah. So you are working up there, you do two years and then uh, what comes next for you? 
So I started applying to uh, graduate schools. Nova Southeastern was my number one. So uh, uh-huh. yeah, came down here and interviewed and uh, um, sure enough, got in and then started the uh, next transition in my life. So that's great. Yeah. And so you got your PhD. So it's a DPT, Doctor of okay, Physical Therapy. Sorry. So yeah, and and that was from Nova. From Nova, yeah. And you, uh, yeah. So I mean, Nova is just an incredible program. It's it's really impressive to see the growth uh, throughout since I started. So I was there 07, 010, or 2010. And right when I had moved down, I mean, the campus was really starting to uh, put in some big buildings. You had the Alvin Sherman Library, the uh, the big recplex that they had there. So, I mean, they were making big changes there. But even seeing the surrounding town of Davie evolve in the last decade is incredible i mean there was areas where it was all trailer parks off of davy road that's all new new development you know gated community area um so to see the revenue a come through the school but also how it affected the surrounding uh, community it's been really impressive to see yeah um i've gotten involved with the ambassador board there at, at nova and I'm, I'm just i've really found out a lot as a result of being involved with that mm-hmm. board and just so impressed with nova and uh, what they've done yeah so so you graduate and and then you're now uh, a, a doctor and mm-hmm. what's your next step it's a great question so i'd say for any well in the physical therapy world what i look at when i'm hiring employees or, or new uh dpts are the degree is obviously important um, but their clinical experience particularly in an outpatient sports setting to me is crucial because in that type of setting, you have to, you're dealing with higher level of patients. So you're, you need to be able to talk to people. You need to be able to problem solve very quickly. You know, you need to be able to learn how to progress a patient properly based on their, their injury, things like that. You need to really be, uh, work well, team chemistry, things like that. So at that time I had done, uh, my clinicals were all in sports medicine, uh, scenarios. So, um, atmosphere. So there were two in particular that I was looking at locally here. There was one in Davie and Plantation and then another one that was on the beach. Um, uh, so I joined uh, Jack Satorsky at XL Physical Therapy, who's great PT, very reputable, had been around for a long time. Um, and that, you know, in that experience, I was really hoping to, A, you know, learn a lot uh, as a new grad, uh, learn from from his skill set, he's obviously done a tremendous job, and also just see a lot of. Uh, they were seeing a lot of post-operative patients as well, so post rotator cuff, ACL, things like that. Um, I just always had a passion for it, even in my clinicals. So you get a person coming in day one who's, you know, they're maybe nervous, they're in pain, things like that. They don't really know what to expect, and it's it's kind of cool to see their journey evolve. You know, that's cool. Yeah, Jack did some work on my bicep when I tore my bicep. Oh, okay. He was the one who rehabbed me. Yeah. So uh, did a great job. Yeah, I met a CT. I was like, uh, yeah, like right around probably the time you were starting. Uh, well, I was oh, oh 06, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, never want to tear your bicep. <laughs> it's Yeah. I mean, anytime you tear a tendon or a ligament, it's- It was bad. It's, it's yeah. a long rehab. <laughs> yeah, hopefully no more, no more of that. Yeah. So, so you're working there with Jack, mm-hmm. things are going well. When does, when is the idea that you want to have your own business come into? Life? Yeah, I think, uh, so I was there for five years and for one of the years, uh, ran his, uh, the beach location while he opened up another one by Holy Cross. So I think, you know, just driving to work one day and, um, just, you know, asking the question in my mind, like if I need to do this now or never type thing, it was at a great time in my life. I feel like I've gained, I learned a lot from, from Jack and my experience at Excel. Uh, but it was a time where I thought I was kind of plateauing as far as what, uh, what I was getting out of that practice. Um, and, and that, that career, I'm sorry, that direction, I should say. Um, so it was, it was a time. So I think it was more of just like, all right, I really want to do it more on the how end of things. How can I do that? I think one of the things that I'm not sure if you've had any other healthcare practitioners on, on the I podcast, think, but I think, so. no, I think one of the things that we see, well, I have my friends are orthopedic surgeons, they're in dentistry, whatever the case may be, but we are all taught to be staff clinicians. There's not a business aspect necessarily to our program. We took a business course in PT school, but it was not helpful. Uh, it, it, they could have done a lot more with it. Um, but you know, it, it's, there's so many areas and, and 
starting to practice to be aware of uh, that we just were never educated or, or taught about. So I feel like a lot of people who go to be uh, start their own practice of some sort are kind of learning along the way, you know, so they built the reputation up where they're not necessarily concerned about the volume of patients coming in. It's more of like, all right, I need to hire a front desk, billing, marketing, you know, kind of land all these different areas of the, of the company to come together to make it a well-oiled machine where it can, it can run smoothly. So. It's interesting because, you know, as a banker, that's com yeah. you know, a common thing that we hear is, you know, that, that doctors are not good business people. Right. And, uh, and it's true for some other professions mm -hmm. as well, because just as you're saying, you know, you're, you're taught a very defined curriculum you know, focused on, you know, specific skill set that you need as a doctor and uh, to work with patients. But, you know, in the end, if you're going, if you're going into business for yourself, you're not just going to work for somebody. Right. You've got to have these skills about how to run a business, how to make money, how yeah. to control your overhead, all of these things. So how did you... How did you develop all that? Yeah, I mean, I was, when I had put in, uh, I gave Excel two months advance notice uh, that I'd be, you know, parting ways. And I was, I literally bought a book called How to Start a Practice. And it was something that we have a professional organization. It's the American Physical Therapy Association. So it's a, it's definitely an area of knowledge that you can tap into for different things like that, accounting, billing, and there's, uh, there are people on there that will help answer questions. So I stumbled upon a, uh, a business. It, he doesn't like to call himself a consultant. Uh, I think more of a business teacher, but he only specializes in uh, physical therapy, private practices. So I had a great call with him two hours long. He's asking great questions um, that I, I didn't know the answer to, but those were questions that I had as well. So, or I would ask him questions and, you know, right off the bat, he's firing away questions. I'm sorry, answers that made a lot of sense to me. And so I spent a lot of money with him, you know, initially as you, you kind of, I think you trust your gut over time and it, it didn't sound so salesy. It was more of like, wow, this guy really has a passion for helping PTs out because he was in that position. He was a physical therapist, Okay, started a company, uh, only works with private practices, physical therapists, set their company up because that's what he did. He started his own and learned so much that he, he stepped out of being a physical therapist just to focus on his company to help teach people how to be CEOs. So, wow, yeah. that's great. So you you really didn't start talking to him until you already had, you had already made the move, right? Yeah, so, well, exactly. <laughs> you took so, the jump. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm out doing my own thing. And when I say that I was, uh, I, patients reached out to me after I left and I didn't reach out to anyone, but so I had a, a couple people I was working with and I would go to their house and see them. I would take a table, you know, make everything portable and, and go see them. And it was just cash paying service at that time. It was it was tough because I didn't charge normal rates. Uh, some of them I was literally just charging them their copay because I wanted to stay uh, in the minds of the surgeons that I had built a reputation with. I didn't want to lose that relationship. So I knew it was a matter of time before I could open up my practice. I just didn't know when, you know, or, or how at that point. But so I think financially it was a tough time. But you know, it, I look back and I. I probably would do the same thing. Um, but I was driving everywhere, you know, kind of is what it is. I, I have a patient up in Wellington, I have a patient down in uh, Golden Beach area, you know, so it, it was, it was an experience, one of those experiences you don't want to do again, but <laughs> it, you learn a lot in the process too. Yeah. So you're, you were just doing that in between to, to make money, right? Right, right. While you were Figuring really out. formulating your plan. Yeah. So that's pretty actually bold that you you know, you didn't have it all baked ahead of time. You just said, well, I'm going to do my own thing. And, and you launched, I guess, right? Yeah. So at that time, uh, saved up some capital to uh, invest in um, this uh, business consultant yeah. and about 25K. And the way that he was able to orchestrate everything was it made a lot of sense, right? So in that first, he's breaking down numbers, metrics, which I love. I'm a math and science guy. So, you know, little things like, how much square footage should you have in your first space? 1,500 to 2,500 square feet. 
know, how many therapists can that have in there comfortably? Um, how many patient visits do the top 10% of clinics across the country see per day? How long should that patient visit be? All these things that at the end of the day are going to help make you successful, but also give quality care to help scale up the practice. So I did a, it, on the south side of Fort Lauderdale here, this is 20, 2015, like uh, summertime 2015, no new construction. I love this area so much, being next to Las Olas, super energetic, very vibrant. Even at that time, I could see things were starting to sprout up. And I wasn't involved in the community as you were, as far as like, you know, going to Broward workshop meetings, like really having a beat on what was going on in this town. But just, you could see, that was where Flagler was really booming at that time. So you could see something was going on in the South End. And I love the neighborhood Rio Vista, I always have, um, having the Midwest background, but you know, being on the water is perfect situation for me. So South of the river here of, uh, of on third street, um, or third Avenue, I'm scouting this area. So my grid I was looking at to open up was anywhere from Andrews West, uh, east of federal north to Las Olas, south to 84. There was just no new construction at the time. Yeah. So pinnacle, uh, the Tarpon river over here, they were the first high rise and uh at a ground ground floor that was vacant but it there was no for sale or for lease sign at the time it was supposed to be two small restaurants like cafe type situation and it wasn't on the market so uh my buddy who's an unbelievable realtor roger morelli he is also aggressive with it too so he really tracked down and pursued it and uh sure enough it was open so 2,000 square feet perfect uh new construction or i would I had to do the build out, so it was a raw space. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that was that was the introduction, the first construction project. And and you opened up in in that space uh, when June of 2016. Wow. So yeah, first and that day, was your first kind of yeah launch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. So it was uh, it was exciting. I saw four patients the first day, and just kind of grew from there. Yeah, so, yeah. And did you have any employees when you started? I opened up with, with uh, my front desk coordinator at the time, who's actually my office manager now. Okay. She's, uh, she's kind of my ride or die, been with me since day <laughs> one. So amazing, amazing person. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. So as you did that, as you, you, you know, so you obviously you didn't really have a mentor, but you had a, a consultant who was business, really yeah. helping you do this whole thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, it was, it was, uh, you know, you're, you're in uncharted territory for the, you know, you've, as, as I look back at the time and I'm like, all right, opening up with 130, 150K, like at that time seemed like crazy amount of money, like, you know, wait, wow, this is a huge loan type thing as opposed to where I'm at now. But, <laughs> you know, it's either way, it, it, it's, I think it was so important because it, you know, it keeps you on your toes. It, motivates you it you know if you got to do a 12 to 15 hour day it is what it is like you can't fail you know what i mean you you got so much so much riding on this the situation so and how did you because when you take that jump right mm -hmm. you take that jump you're comfortable working you had a job everything was fine you make that jump how did you did you have fear that you were facing that you might not make it um not really. I, I think for, for our field, you're going to get a job if you fail. Meaning like it's, if, if you do fail, which it never, it didn't really cross my mind, but it was, it was kind of like the worst case scenario. I can go get a job down the road at a hospital. I'll probably be miserable there for a period of time, <laughs> but I can make, you know, 80, 85,000 to get myself back on the map and, right. and regroup. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So for you, it was kind of like, Hey, you know, I got to fall back because you have the skill. Yeah. You've got that skill set that is marketable and right. can and, always and get the, a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a, that's a nice to be able to spring back on. So as you, so you launched your first business, which was, and how did that go for you in 2016? Great. I mean, it was, it was one of those things where, you know, I scaled up pretty quickly where, uh, two years later, there was myself and three other PTs. So we're rocking in that space. But at that time, you know, I'm already seeing like, we're kind of, 
busting out of the seams a little bit already. And the opportunity, so patients are coming in and they're like, hey, you know, do you know any good personal trainers? That type of thing. And I'm like, you know, I'd send them to a couple of people I knew, but, or do you know any good masseuses or, you know, that type of thing. And I'm just like, man, I wish, because now you're relying on other people to, uh, vow, like you're vouching, they, they trust you, you built that rapport, but I'm not 100% sure that that person I'm referring is going to give the exact same quality care and, and mm -hmm. high level of care that I'm working hard to do. So the thought always crossed my mind where I would love to have everything just in house. Maybe that's a little more controlling <laughs> than <laughs> most people, but the, the ability to, Hey, uh, Keith's coming back from this, uh, elbow injury. Um, you know, really talking to a trainer, really try to avoid X, Y, and Z. Let's let this heal a little bit more, that, that type of thing. So having that communication, you know, between everyone. So, um, but as we scale up, I, I'm kind of seeing that where there's room to grow this business more, you know, I just need more space. So that's where it, my mind starts going a little bit and all right, what can I do? What's a, you know, type thing. And then, and then where did you go with that? So the, and that's the, that's the issue out East here, right? Real estate is very expensive. Um, and to do what we need to do as sports physical therapists, I need to people to sprint. I need people, I need brick and mortar. I need more space, I need more equipment, you know, things like that. So, um, Again, driving around this, this, that same type of grid uh, is there was just nothing. So other than land, and this was pre-pandemic. So this is like 2019 when I started scouting. And uh, you know, you drive by this like dilapidated lot. House looks like I don't know how it's standing, but it's under contract or the owner's holding out or something like that. So I'm working on patients. You know, our, as you know, our facility is all glass. Even the old one is, is all glass. And right across the street from me, there's this house, you know, and it's, um, it was an environmental testing uh, company. And, but just the location, corner lot on three streets. I know this area, like the back of my, you know, back of my hand, take me north of sunrise, I nothing. But this area here, I know very well. And I just, again, back to the growth, you know, you start hearing things about what, what's coming, new federal courthouse, you know, things like that. So, uh, same thing, same, same buddy, Roger, you know, tracked it down. And, uh, they were the previous, um, the guy that was in contract, they wanted to do a seven story project there that the neighborhood was not very fond of. So I think he defaulted on a payment too. Um, so, the owner was willing to entertain another offer, which was ours. So the tough part was getting funding. So you guys weren't around at that, that time, uh, at this location at least. So right. um, it was tough. It was right trying to get, uh, I got, was denied by 11 banks essentially. They, wow. They, they viewed it as too risky. So ground up construction, only had three years of financial, financial uh, uh, history at that time. So, and it was, to get the land acquisition of land and construction, it was a big loan. So uh, I, I look back and I do understand it, but uh, another bank gave me a chance, a small one. And uh, yeah, it was getting crushed in that loan, <laughs> which is how I met you, <laughs> thankfully. So yeah, well, thank, thankfully for us too. I mean, we're yeah. glad to be able to, uh, to, to help you with that. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, but that's interesting. It's uh, that turned down by 11 banks and you know, you got a great, business today i mean you've built the building if if you haven't seen it and you live in fort lauderdale on on third ave i mean that is just a beautiful it's funny because ryan was he's like wow did you see the building i'm like yeah, yeah I've, I've been in there I, i've had <laughs> you know i'm a client yeah. uh, but it is i mean it's just really a, a, you've added so much to the area by by building that that beautiful building there too appreciate it yeah the concept really i mean the nice thing is, is architects, they're, they're really good at just kind of just start laying things out, even on a piece of paper with, with a, a pencil. John Barranco, who's right over here, he did the build out for my first place as well. And so I went, you know, told him, hey, man, I'm picking up this, this land. Here's what I want to do. Um, keep a lot of the same concepts, meaning high ceilings, a lot of glass, a lot of natural light, modern look, um, a place that people can come and, and have a feel good uh, experience but the trick is i need a rooftop and that's that's where it was a uh, definitely a challenge i mean it's a huge investment waterproofing weight distribution 
several for ADA compliance, you know, two stairwell access, access, accesses, um, and also uh, an elevator as well. So, you know, you're really upping the, the investment on that. And then how can, what's the ROI on that? You know, what's, how can you monetize that? What, what, would, what would I be doing up there to help pay for that as mm -hmm. well? So um, that's where the personal training, sports performance training, things like that, uh, th that idea really came across. Yeah, well, great job on that building. Yeah, it's really, you. really Appreciate beautiful. It. And, you know, having done a building and, you know, south of the river ourselves, you know, yeah. we tried to make aesthetically pleasing as 100%. opposed to what was here before. Yeah. You know, it's nice to see others doing that and making the city a nicer place to live. Definitely. So congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. So, you know, you've had kind of a great career. You're still a young man. Um, what's in the future for you? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I, we're, I'm at a point, I think the business is at a point where things are, I say this knock on wood, because I always bite my tongue when I say this, but things are firing, moving on all cylinders very well. So now I, this summer and this fall, I'm gonna get back to the drawing board. And I learned a lot in this project. So one of the things I did was I kept my old facility as well and turned it into, so we, the new place is called Sport, the uh, older place is called rehab. And the thought behind that was for so many years, we were turning away folks that were a little bit older, they had neurological conditions, stroke, Parkinson's, things like that. Um, because the, the setting that I wanted to create at that time was very fast paced, younger, sports medicine, that type of thing. But all those folks you know, in the community were being, I, I felt like I wanted to help them, but I didn't have the atmosphere for it. So that was the opportunity to create rehab have doctors of physical therapy that really specialize and cater to those types of conditions. It worked out very well. Uh, it allows me to treat the whole community now. So if I'm getting uh, Mike, who's a 40 year old um, post ACL reconstruction and his mom is having balance issues, I can help my company can help them, you know, the yeah. family practice. Yeah. So um, to take that concept and do it somewhere else. So there's a few businesses that I've been to. One in particular I like a lot is the One Hotel. I, I like their concept as far as, you know, it's not so commercialized like a Marriott or something like that. Uh, seems like you get a little bit more of a personal touch. So I think to be able to scale, have a few more locations, but not lose that personal touch. In, in the process. Wow. So. That's, that's what we hope to do too. Yeah. <laughs> in banking, you know, for, yeah. take the same concept and take it to other, other markets, but maintain that relationship, maintain, exactly. you know, that local business feel, right. You know, so, uh, well, good luck with that. I and, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, any other advice? I mean, you've had, it seems like, you know, and I'm sure you've had problems, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. but it seems like you've just gone, you know, uh, like a great tra trajectory, almost like nothing can stop you, which is the way it looks a lot of times from the outside. Ha can you tell us about one thing that was like, you know, kind of frightening or tough? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I'd say, let me think, 20, 2021 was probably the toughest year of my life. Uh, personal was going through divorce and uh, with dealing with construction at the same time, it was it was tough. Uh, so you had a lot of, <laughs> really between attorneys, contractors, you know, all these people <laughs> coming coming at you. But I'll tell you what, it it uh, people talk about you know you get calluses, we get calluses on our hands from working out. But building that mental callus was, I, I feel like I feel unstoppable now. So the next project, whatever that may be, uh, I, I I think I'll really enjoy it more. You know, I think that I've learned so much in this project with particularly with construction, the city permits, all that stuff. Um, and I've met a tremendous amount of amazing people in the process. Uh, I got a good buddy of mine who's a builder. His name's Jared. He huge part, saved me tons of time, tons of money with battling, the, uh, helping to keep the contractor honest, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my staff, you know, you as you guys have probably learned too during COVID, you know, you have these unforeseen challenges that come at you and you see who the people who are loyal, who don't panic, who can adapt, who are looking at the bigger picture as opposed to maybe themselves in that particular moment. Yeah. So. Well, that's, that's great advice. And thank you for sharing that. Yep. Is there anything else that you would offer to anybody 
uh, who's who might be out there listening, thinking about starting their own business or thinking yeah. about doing what you did? I think that people love to have the idea of, I'm going to be a CEO. Well, there's, there's a lot of undertaking that goes with that title. It's, you know, expect to work on the weekends, expect to work nights, expect not to sleep at night, expect to have a lot of sacrifices in your life that may not be for everyone. I mean, there's, there's a lot of perks doing the nine to five, going home spending time with your family, things like that. But I think that some people are just wired a little differently and probably borderline obsessive about things, you know, and you have to be because it's, there's so many things that pressure or that are riding on the decisions you make during your, on a daily basis. Um, but I think my biggest advice is work, work, work hard, whatever, whatever you do, if you open up an ice cream store, whatever it is, just work your tail off. And I think that puts you in such a better position for success. Um, than someone who because there's there's a lot of people who don't work hard and I, I just feel like that is something that you have control over um, as opposed to some things you don't so that's that's great and I mean we've heard that from a lot of people this, this you know even from you know like uh, when we had Keith Koenig and Steve Halmos here I mean that was kind of their message was you know just work yeah and and continue to work and continue to work and can and don't give up yeah absolutely so, which sounds simple, but it's, uh, it, and it is simple, but it's not easy, right? Right. It's, it's extremely difficult to yeah. work like that. Um, well, well, thanks. So you're also involved in uh, the Broward Workshop, yeah. uh, which is a great organization and, and local business leaders. Any other organizations that you're involved with? Not currently. I think that's the biggest one. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's been great. I think joining, joining and uh, getting to meet other prominent CEOs in the community like yourself who have had such a, a huge effect on Fort Lauderdale uh, and hearing your story and hearing about some of the, all the challenges and, and, and wins you've had throughout your career. It's been really impressive. And uh, I, I, I value a lot of the conversations I have with, you know, even if it's sitting at the breakfast table, getting ready for a speaker, whatever the case may be. So I have a, a ton to learn, you know, I want to continue to learn from guys like yourself and, I think it's cool that everyone, even though South Florida seems like, or Fort Lauderdale, when I first went down here, seemed like such a big city, but it's it's small, which I like in its own its own sense as well. The community is amazing. I mean, there's so many cool things happening here. So it, I'm excited that you guys are a few blocks away. And again, I appreciate the opportunity to be working with you guys too, and sitting down like this and just kind of chopping it up a little bit. So. <laughs> well, we we appreciate. Uh, your business and th and thank you for for being a client of ours. Yeah. Uh, we we really appreciate it. So um, now we're going to go to what we call the lightning round. Yeah, we, we prepped we prepped Carson for that, right? So okay, we're not going to stump you with anything, but just quick uh, <coughs> quick kind of thirty second answers. Yeah, sometimes we have people go on and on, <coughs> on the lightning round. But okay, I'm sure you you'll get it right. So do you have a favorite book? You know, I'm, here's the long answer. Excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> I read so many medical journals, so I'm a big podcaster. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, talk about those too. Yeah, I would say the uh, PBD podcast, Patrick, Patrick Bed David, uh, Rogan. Um, I'm a Daily Wire fan as well. So I'd say those are my, my top three. Excellent. <clears throat> um, any song from your youth that, you know, it's like your theme song? Uh, I would say probably Pearl Jam. Um, there's a song called Alive that I like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. 90s. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good one. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Work harder. Good one. <clears throat> what about AI? Are you optimistic or fearful? Um, I'm optimistic. Good. Uh, and thank you for not going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would that be? Great question. Um, hmm. I say because he's local. I'd love to have dinner with uh, Patrick Bed David. Just okay. pick his brain business-wise. I'm sure he's listening. Yeah. So, you know, contact uh, Carson. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so... What's your favorite local restaurant? Uh, 
where you and Patrick bet David could yeah. go. <laughs> um, Casa D'Angelo is up there. I oh, yeah. For, yeah. That's great. I was just at Runway 84, though, Friday. That, that place is phenomenal. It, I it, love that, too. Yeah. Especially it, that, you know, the, the new room there. With, yeah. Uh, yeah. You did a great job. The good fellas room. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's something that you're grateful for today? I think my, my upbringing, my childhood, Ohio life. Wow. I think it ingrained great. so many positive things that have helped me to be where I'm at today. What's a new skill that you're learning? Spanish. Really? It's very slowly. Let oh, me throw it. Let wow. me put that caveat there. How are you doing it? Um, through there, there's a website and also uh, a couple friends that are helping me out. I'm trying to just learn new words every day. Okay. That type of thing. Good. So. Well, that definitely will come in handy. Yeah. In South Florida. Exactly. So obviously you're in good shape and you... Adv you're an advocate for a healthy lifestyle. What do you do to stay in shape? I think the biggest thing is weight training, resistance training. Uh, I think as I'm 41, so as we, particularly with males, as we get a little bit older, getting that hormonal release four days a week is really important. I think change my workouts up a little bit, try to be a little bit more balanced, incorporate more flexibility, a little bit more cardio, things like that. Yeah. Great. And you, do you work out right at your facility? I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I go to powerhouse as well. I think yeah. you're, you're anywhere for 10, 11 hours and you want to switch it up. A yeah. Bit. So, and I think maybe you can relate like when you're at your place, I'm like, got to change that life, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. So, yeah. So, and powerhouse kind of old school, like weightlifting gym, right? It's uh, or is it, it changed? It's changed. Yeah. Okay. This particular location at Galleria, yeah. uh, they have a lot of the same aesthetics as as my facility as well. Oh, okay. Um, but I've got some buddies that go there, so it's, it's a good community over there. Good. So, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah. Uh, easiest way is if you want to shoot me an email, Carson at soflowpt.com. That's probably the easiest. Okay. Um, Instagram as well, just my full name, Carson Kudachief at gmail dot com. Um, I'm happy to get my cell phone. To the listeners, it's real easy. 330-603-1089. Feel free to reach out too. So kept, right. kept the well, I can number. vouch for Carson's uh, ability as a, a, as a therapist. He's, he's helped me with my elbow, my back, my, you know, and who knows what next, yeah. you know. <laughs> Hopefully uh, nothing serious, but uh, he's got a great crew, great, you know, I love going in there. Everybody's so friendly, personable. You've done a great job, Carson. Thank you. Really yeah. appreciate it. Congratulations on everything. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for being this here. This has been great. Thanks for tuning in to Localities Making Bank podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to catch the latest episodes and visit localitybank.com today to learn more about all the benefits of banking local. Mm -hmm.